Welcome everybody. It's super late already and I have and I should definitely not be doing this, but I have a special thing. Something that I've been looking for for a long time, looking for the good price that should help me expand my cloud project and be able to consolidate a few things uh, into less physical machines as I worked earlier today. Uh, I did all the hard drives and I should not need any external boxes anymore. Should be able to switch on a physical machine as well. So I have here two Xeon processors, used ones, one for the HP microservice that I already have and the other one for the one I buy, I plan to buy next month. They have just arrived today from the UK. So let's get them both tested and then one permanently installed into the server. So this is the so this is the Intel Xeon E3 1220L. This is the earliest dual core Xeon that should be compatible with the micro server. It's a, as far as I know, it's a Sandy Bridge core. It should not be that much faster than the Celeron that's in there now, but it supports AES NI instruction set, and that should help FreeNAS perform better with encrypted volumes. And that's one of the reasons why I'm installing it. Could have gotten even a four core Xeon for not much more money, but I would probably need to disable two cores or go for active cooling, and it kind of defeats the purpose of you know having a silent server in the living room and it's a bit overkill for my setup. By now you all know the ordeal. Unscrew. Lift. But now things change a bit. To be able to start a new processor, you need to first slide the motherboard out. There's a tray behind that you just pull. But before being able to pull the tray, of course, you need to disconnect all cables. So let's start here. One. Two. If I can, actually, it has this very cool hooks that you can just use to lift the pin from the right position, or at least that's how what it looked like on the other side. Scary, a bit stiff. Oh, I guess I can drag it out a little bit to study it better. That was just the USB that was getting stuck. This board looks much nicer than the previous generation, the, the N40L, the other one I have. We have here a slot for a TPN module that I don't use. Useful if you have BitLock, for example. And there is another here, socket for optical drive that's not populated. One PCI Express slot. But let's use the included tools to just Get done with this. Unscrew the uh, stupid breaking the board. Let's use the included Torx tool to just remove the heatsink. Why? Okay. 
and get it out. And we get the zeon back in. Should be just a matter of letting it fall into the place. In. Put the lever back in place. All right, it is installed. I'm not gonna install the heat sink yet. What I'm gonna do is reassemble the computer quickly, not even shut the cover, and try both processes because I don't have another server now. Uh, so I need to give the a feedback to the seller on eBay. So I'm gonna get this tested tonight and already leave it running with the Xeon. So in case there's anything wrong, I should find out during the next days. All right, fingers crossed, should be already good, but let's just wait. Oh no, I don't like that. Oh, it's coming back. That's very strange. Can it know whether there is a heat stick installed or not? Oh, now it went over 20%. It's very strange. I've never seen such a thing before. Let's see. Ooh, huh? Do I need a heat sink? Now it's seventy percent, hundred percent. That is very bizarre. I've never seen such behavior before in my life. I have the HP screen. I'm sorry for the poor screen capture. I'm usually better at this, but it's just super light. I'm not gonna set up the capture card and, and everything of sixteen gigs. And here we have it, one Xeon. Hyper threading is enabled, the Celeron doesn't have it, not sure how much that helps, but it's beautiful. 
gonna wait until it boots up and then just turn it off. Should not overheat in two minutes, it boots quite fast. Beautiful. Right, time to swap processor. If this one works, actually I can already assume it's gonna work and do the heatsink. So I save myself some time. And there's more chance that it's broken than, well, tough life. Let's get the second Z in. I'm always scared to do this. Super fragile. But I admire the precision of the mechanism. All right, the processor is in. All right, time to clean the heat sink. All right, it looks clean enough to me. I honestly never know how much thermal paste is too much thermal paste, yeah? And there are all the techniques around in the internet on how to spread it around, and etc. But I honestly don't know. So my philosophy is the following, yeah? I just apply a little bit in the center that I think it is enough. And then I run the computer, and if it's not enough, I add more. And if it's, I think that is far too much actually, but it's not conductive, so we should be good to go. So this heat sink is rated for 35 watts and this processor should tops at 20 something so should be good to go. Et voilà. Right, second CPU is coming up. Let's see what happens. I'm sorry this is dark, but same thing. So apparently whenever you change processor, it dies, restarts, maybe it's testing something. A bit finds the processor doesn't match. I have no idea. Weird though. A message would be nice. Yeah, now it goes a bit further. And if it does the same thing as the previous one, it's gonna shut down again. And restart. Or not. Oh, yeah, we are. 
your game. Alright, we put this in production now. I guess that's it for today, guys. Thank you for watching, and I guess that's, let's see what happens in this project.